Dallas police are looking for a killer after a comedian died weeks after being shot. We all got the car, we was at the club, like, hey man, Roy got to get rushed to the hospital, man. And um, even when I had spoke to him, he was telling me that it was a setup. June 24, 2017, an interview on Real Life Productions' YouTube page premiered with Dallas, Texas comedian Roy Lee Pate that would eventually lead to him losing his life. As the camera was locked on Roy Lee, who at the floor, he uttered the statement, come on, you from Oak Cliff, America, come F with us till you come on up so we can rob you because you ain't really from over here, right? Roy Lee was drawing reference to a particular rapper in question who went by the name Marquis DeAndre Conway, also known as Yella Beezy. In the previous interview, Yella Beezy would have claimed he was from Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff, I'm up, I'm here. Yella, I'm up, Beezy, man, we in here, man. Y'all see what this is? This is my city, man. Y'all already know what it is, man. Oak Cliff, America, said that meat that stand on that, man, for real. From Roy Lee's perspective, he wasn't simply going to let what he believed was a lie be told. But there was one other factor that influenced his decision to speak publicly, exposing Yellow Beezy. There was a bit of a rift between Yellow Beezy and another Dallas, Texas rapper by the name of Melvin Noble, also known as Mo3. Now, Mo3 and Roy Lee were like best friends. They had a brotherly bond, always joking around and supporting the other. Yeah, I had to do the Mo3 challenge too, man. It's for my city, man. My nigga Mo3 on the block, in the, in the paper, and I always kept them noodles, and it was all on me. Roy Lee was a stand-up guy, and just as Mo3 would have his back, he also stuck up for Mo3. That was his extra incentive for speaking on Yellow Beezy. Yes, that means you don't count. That's why. That's why I heard it, me, cause with Mo3 and other rappers saying the way they wasn't from where they from, but Mo3 went to uh, the, the, these schools in North Dallas. You understand me? Those statements would escalate the already building feud between the rappers. But now, Roy Lee had a target on his back and would soon be ambushed for his words. That reality would become true in less than two months after the interview. Rival Yella Beezy would find Roy Lee and have him jumped by his entourage. As recounted by Roy Lee, he was at the King of Diamonds Club where the incident happened. Yellow Beezy would swing with the punch, but luckily Roy Lee saw the incoming blow from the side of his eye and was able to dodge the impact. However, that did not deter Yellow Beezy from carrying out his intentions. Instead, he allegedly had his entourage then attack Roy Lee inflicting a blow to the back of the head. He tried to sneak me, and, and, and she, I got jumped a little bit by his partner then, but he ain't hit me, so that's why I want to fight a one-on-one. -on -one. It was at that moment that Roy Lee came to know. Yella Beezy held a grudge over his statement in the interview that insinuated he was a liar about where he was from. Although no footage of the incident has been spread, there is one source where footage of Roy Lee fighting in another club of the same type show him being surrounded by a group. Just in this case, the first punch was thrown by him. Viewers who came across the rare clip speculate this may be the footage of the incident, but Yella Beezy cannot be made out in the clip, and it contradicts the story of him being ambushed, so maybe it's of another incident. After his altercation with Yella Beezy, Roy Lee further pushed the boundaries of issues that stemmed from his interview and the ambush of him at the club. He was adamant about getting his fair chance to redeem his honor, or as the street culture would say, get his lick back. So, we trying to go the, the good way, because I'm getting my lick back some one day. I'm getting my lick back. To get what he felt like he deserved after being ambushed and outnumbered. Roy Lee called out Yellow Beezy, to a one-on-one -on -one fight where both of them put up a cash amount of $8,000 and used their hands instead of guns with no one else involved but just them. Roy Lee grew more and more aggressive in getting his opportunity at a fair fight. When no response from Yellow Beezy came, he began reciting the very thing that sparked the feud between them both. 
even more. Roy Lee started taunting Yellow Beezy about being robbed two times in the city because he's not from where he said he's from. You got robbed in the Bronx? You got robbed, you the only rapper I know that got robbed twice. They ain't did nothing, they don't want them He was making every attempt to get under Yellow Beezy's skin, to do right by him and have a fair fight. That included name calling, like the Pink Panther and Yellow Belly. So you waiting on a fight with who? The Pink Man, Pink Panther, whatever y'all want to call him, man. The more Lee pushed, the more his rivals were behind the scenes plotting on taking his life. Roy Lee made the mistake of assuming the lack of response to his pressing of the matter meant that no one was listening, but someone was. Still, Roy Lee wasn't backing down or putting the feud to rest until he got his fight, and he made it his mission to bring up the problem between him and Yellow Beezy every chance he had to get his request for a fair fight answered. Roy Lee would return to the same platform, Real Life Productions, with another interview that aired on YouTube on November 3rd, 2017. But this time, things began escalating beyond conversation of simply fighting. Roy Lee appeared to be frustrated with what seemed to him like cowardice from Yellow Beezy. In a moment of agitation, Roy Lee let it be known that while he was not trying to pick up a gun to settle their grievances, he can also go that route and find grandmothers and mothers as Yellow Beezy appeared not about fighting, but shooting. But you, you don't want to fight because you ain't got nothing from her. I'm talking about from her. I ain't talking about from her. This easy. You yeah, nigga, I, done, I, I just got out of jail. Things would go down a dark road. Something that began as what most civilians would consider simple. Someone like Yella Beezy and Roy Lee that came up among gang culture and vice ridden environments took it as a sign of disrespect they needed answering for. No matter how much Roy Lee tried, even getting on a three-way call with the proposition to fight, Yella Beezy turned down the request. A couple months would pass. Roy Lee would again be a guest on the platform Real Life Productions from a January 24th, 2018 aired interview. On the stage, he also had with him his two nephews, one who was pursuing a career in rapping and the other had the skills of a boxer. They would break down how the altercation went at the club as they were there when it happened. The real story had a few more details. The main one being that Roy Lee, who was a frequent drinker, was drunk on the night and initiated the confrontation when he was questioning patrons if they were there with Yellow Beezy as he was looking for him. Yellow Beezy would catch wind of the commotion and sneak around Roy Lee with the punch he dodged. After which, his nephew claimed about nine persons of Yellow Beezy's entourage was attacking Roy Lee after knocking him to the ground and that was when they stepped in and got him out of there. Even though it was an unfair ambush, from the new account of what transpired that night, Roy Lee's lack of judgment from being drunk was at the root of the problem, instigating things more than it needed to be. Do you think this all could have been avoided if Roy Lee just quit drinking so much? It, it, it could have. Right, you, you got a point right there. Roy Lee was a comedian, yes but he was raised around the street culture, engaged in criminal activities, and served jail time. So he still moved with a sense of danger that even deterred previous security personnel from being his bodyguard. Nah, a security guard, a security guard told me that. Nah, a security guard told me that because when we go to V-Live, and then we was getting the two people, he said, man, I don't think I could be your bodyguard. You, you doing too much. It was all fun and games. But someone was looking on, unimpressed with anger in their heart towards Roy Lee. All the while, persons like his nephew was trying to advise him to just let the feud go and forgive. But Roy Lee insisted that if the fight doesn't happen, then nothing can be forgiven. But maybe that was the error in Roy Lee's decision that placed him in harm's way. September 25th, 2018, the beginning of the end was set into motion when Roy Lee was shot. Lying in the hospital bed, he broke down what happened that night. At around 7.50 p.m., 
Roy Lee was now about to leave from the parking lot of Texaco on Preston Road after grabbing something to eat at one of his favorite barbecue spots. His shooter was likely tailing him and monitoring his whereabouts from Shell's location right across the street. Roy Lee would glimpse a figure approaching and when he looked up, all he could see was a person in a hoodie before the shooting rang out. Three shots were fired with one hitting him in the leg, breaking the bone. Roy Lee underwent surgery and after a few days was released from the hospital. He was back in good spirits, arguing with a friend tied into the gang culture about calling the police and not him after he was shot. From his post to his Facebook account, it seemed like Roy Lee had a new appreciation for life and was ready to bury the hatchet with his past feuds. He nearly lost his life and as all things appeared, he dodged a bullet while at the same time receiving one. He went on to continue doing shows over the next week and some days. October 12, 2018, Roy Lee was scheduled to perform at a stand-up comedy show at Heritage Hall, Paris, Texas. He would go live on Facebook, driving on his way to the event, happy, smiling, and listening to music, having a good time. Lee appeared back and better than ever, but that's what made the news that came next so tragic. Roy Lee had a great show, but it would be his last. It was like fate already knew it was his time and allowed him one last show as a send-off because the show was on Friday and Saturday news broke that Roy Lee passed away from complications to the shooting he sustained weeks earlier. His complications led to him developing a blood clot in his lungs before he could undergo the surgery he had scheduled the following day to rectify the issue. He passed. Roy Lee was so close to surviving, but things didn't turn out that way. He didn't, he didn't die in the hospital. He, uh, he got out the hospital. He got back on the started moving around. He was back doing his shows and shit. I'm taking his medicine, got a blood clot. His passing shook up the entire community, but the one whose life was forever damaged by his passing was his best friend turned brother, Mo3, who fell into dark times. So how did how did that affect, affect you when he passed away? Fuck me up. I can't, still can't believe my nigga dead. You know, you're a comedian. Roy Lee's passing ignited the feud between Mo3 and Yella Beezy even more. The shit escalated when Roy Lee passed. Hmm. Roy Lee just wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Yella Beezy. Ultimately, Yella Beezy would be targeted by rivals being shot four times. How many times were you shot? Uh, like what, four times? You Unfortunately, Mo3 was also shot, but unlike his rival Yella Beezy, he didn't survive his wounds. Such a sad tale of lives lost to a cycle that seems to never end. Rest in peace, Roy Lee Pate.